Hey, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. Let's get you sharpened up. Too much? Okay, don't mind me. Well, today's video is in collaboration with Capture One. So shout out to them for not only getting me early access to the iPhone app, yes, Capture One on the iPhone now, but also shout out to them for giving you a seven day free trial. So if you want to take advantage of that, see the description down below, click that link. So yes, Capture One is now available on your iPhone. But before we talk about that, let's do a little bit of a recap. Capture One, laptop, desktop, doesn't get any better than that. Uh, born in the studio. And that's where I primarily started using it was tethering. There's no better tethering option. So now they've taken that, carried that over to the iPad, which they released last year. And there was a recent update to include Capture One Live. And if you didn't watch that video, go ahead and click the card, check that out. Because now what you can do is tether to your iPad, set that up as a live capture to have people remotely view that. Then less than a year later, now they have Capture One on the iPhone. And guess what? That live functionality exists through your iPhone. So if you watch that video, you'll see me talk about wanting to have cellular on my iPad, but I don't need cellular on my iPad because I got cellular on my phone already. And now if I want to do a live session from my phone tethering, I can. So now you basically have that trifecta completed. You've got it on your laptop, you've got it on your iPad, and you have it on your iPhone. I had access to the beta version, and in my testing, didn't have any major issues. For me, I was most interested in testing out the tethering functionality on the phone. And again, shout out to Capture One for hooking me up with all of the right accessories. So it is highly recommended that you use Apple Lightning to USB adapter. Main reason being is that there's specific firmware and functionality within that adapter that allows for a fast, efficient transfer. And they also hooked me up with some Tether Tools cables to test this all out. I met up with a group of people through a local photo store, Milford Photo. They were hosting a meetup at the Beardsley Zoo. And also shout out to Sigma because they showed up there and lent out a lot of lenses for people to try out. So nice, long telephoto lenses. And I shot a little bit on location. So check this out. I think I wanna try a, a big one for, you have Canon RF mount? I don't, but if you have an adapter, it works seamlessly. Oh, I didn't bring an adapter. What a silly goose I am. So a uh, heavy note to self, uh, bring your adapter. If you're gonna be borrowing someone's lenses, just assume that they don't have the mount that you need and be sure to bring your adapter. Actually really cool, Milford Photo is gonna go, uh, the owner of that is gonna go and get some adapters to let us borrow. So shop local, cause local's dope. So I'm waiting for that. I've got my uh, 24 to 105 on for now. And what the setup here is, I'm going from the R5 USB-C down to USB-A into the lightning adapter into my iPhone. And what I did was I just went on Amazon, spent 20 bucks and got a little lanyard, you know, silicone case. So it's holding it so that that way I can leave the phone on. It doesn't, I don't have to worry about it going in my pocket. And what it also does is it gives me the ability to have the reach to get the shot that I want. And then now I can come back and I can review this. I'm just gonna take a shot of Dre who's filming real quick. And we got this, boom. And then in just a second, now we've got the shot of Dre showing up right over here. So what's really cool is that now I can go through the process of editing this shot. That is award-winning, Dre. I tell you what, that, that's, that's the one, you know? For, forget these big cats, it's that. So now I've got an adapter and I'm using the 150 to 600. This is a Sigma, um, F5 to 6.3, it's a nice lens. It's, you know, decent amount of weight, right? But now uh, I'm gonna be able to get significantly closer than I was before. I started the day when I got here at 96% battery and I was just at 60. So it definitely consumed some battery. I was going back and forth between lowering my screen brightness and turning it up. I, for the most part, kept it up pretty high because I wanted to keep checking my shots and I wanted to be able to see them. And so now I have all of the shots that I did from the day on my phone. I'm gonna go through, pick out a couple that I like, start doing some rating and then start doing some edits and I could just do it right from my phone. I could take a couple of the shots that I got of the Tiger and post them and share them right now and process them really nicely. Very different from the process that you would have if you were to just take it with your phone or from your camera and then transfer that file over to your phone. All right, demo time. So let me just show you quickly what Capture One looks like on the iPhone. Now, if you've used Capture One on the iPad, you're gonna feel right at home. So when I go ahead and open this up, you can see I have my thumbnails of my albums, and then below I have options for additional albums. All the way at the bottom, I have the ability to import, or when I have my camera uh, available, I can connect it either wirelessly or tethered, and it would show up over here. And let me just go ahead and open up the BPT Zoo album, and here are the shots that I got. 
Uh, again, this is all pretty straightforward stuff. When you wanna kinda pinch to zoom, you can zoom in to view larger or smaller thumbnail views there. You can see I have a grouping of a couple of images because those are variants that I created. And if I tap on that, you can see there's the tiger shot. And what I wanted to do was process it a little bit differently. Again, this was all done on the phone. I'll go back. What I can also do in the top right corner is tap on this. You'll see there's a whole bunch of options here. Right now what I want to show you is the filtering because I went ahead and this is how I culled my images. I, I added one stars to my shots. So I was able to cull down the images quite a bit from 354 and I've done some initial processing on my phone. For example, if I tap on this guy, if I tap and hold, you'll see a before and then an after as you would expect. And I want to take these images and I want to finish them on the laptop. Again, we're talking ecosystem here. And that's the beauty of this is I captured these images, I processed them initially, I culled them, processed them, and then now I wanna finalize them on the laptop. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. And I have all of my uh, filtered one stars, I tap on select, I can select all of these and then add them to a specific album. And I went ahead and already did that, but you see down at the bottom left, I tap add to, and then I would choose a new album. And that's what I did right over here, BPT Zoo Selects. And then in the top right, after I had them all here, I added them to the cloud. So right now they are currently synced to my cloud account. And let me show you what it looks like on the laptop in order to access and download those. And like any good cooking show, I've gone ahead and already did it, but let me just show you what it looks like walking through it. Over here in the top, you'll see cloud transfer. And if you don't see that, you can right click, customize this toolbar and then add that. That's just where I like to have it, cloud transfer. What it's gonna do when I click on that is it's gonna show me all of the albums that I have in the cloud. And in this case, I only have two. And here, sure enough, is the BPT Zoo Selects. I would select that and then choose a path of where to put those images. Because I'm working on a dedicated session here, I would choose that capture folder for that session. And then hit import and then just wait and it downloads all your RAWs. And I'm now here in the capture folder, so it's showing me these images. And as I was going through, I wanted to process them a little bit more. Just again, because of the phone is a little bit limited, it doesn't have all the abilities that you have on your laptop or desktop. So what I've done was I went ahead and filtered even further beyond one star to include red labels. And let's just go ahead and click on this little guy, the leopard. And here is a before and after. So you can see I've added in some vignetting, a little bit more contrast. And I definitely desaturated the heck out of those rocks just to have the, the leopard stand out a little bit more. Something similar here. Here's a little before and after and this one as well. And then this guy for sure, uh, before and after. You can see I wanted to make those eyes glow a little bit more there. So that's it. That's the round trip process. I say that's it, but there's, there's really a lot. And it's awesome again to see the progress that Capture One has made going from an application that crushed it on the laptop and the desktop to now an application that's crushing it on the iPad and the first release of the version on the iPhone, which no doubt will continue to crush in the future. If you like the stuff that you see on Sharpen that we're talking about, definitely hit subscribe, hit the bell so that way you don't miss that stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Let's hope you got those skills sharpened. No, sorry, all right, it's done. I'm not gonna do that anymore, sorry. Thanks, bye.